Uh, we will continue from where we left off. We have covered uh, 12 mantras uh, from the third Anuvaka of Sri Rudram. Um, so we will be, there are five more mantras left in this Anuvaka. We will take a look at them today. Saira. Nama Asi Nebya Shaya Nebyascha O Namaha Nama Asi Nebya Shaya Nebyascha O Namaha Nama Asi Nebya Shaya Nebyascha O Namaha in terms of pronunciation, um, most of the letters should be straightforward, but I'll just point out the Ubya. The Ub is the fourth letter in the power, so it has to be aspirated with some extra air. Shayane again, same B comes, which is the fourth letter in the power. Otherwise, uh, it should be easy for all of you. Uh, well, let's look at the meaning. Namaha is salutation. Asinebhyaha <clears throat> Asinebhyaha means to Asina uh, Asinebhyaha is the fourth Vibhakti or case affix which basically means of the word Asina which, so it means to Asina the meaning of Asina is those who are seated it's a plural noun Asina means those who are seated. Asana is seat. Asina means people who are seated on the seats. Okay. So Asine Bhyaha Nama means we bow down to or we salute all those who are seated. Uh, the Rudra who is within all those who are seated, Rudra who helps them all be seated. To that Rudra we Salute. The next word, Shayane Bhyaha. Shayane Bhyaha. Because uh, this Shayane Bhyascha is made of two words, Shayane Bhyaha and Cha. So this Visarga becomes Ish because of the joining of those two words. Okay. Shayane Bhyaha, Cha. When joined together, it becomes Shayane Bhyascha. Okay, it's called Sandhi. So Shayane Bhyaha means to Shayanaha. So this again the fourth Vibhakti, the fourth modification of the simple noun Shayana, which is a plural noun. So to Shayana means Shayane Bhyaha. Shayane Bhyaha Namaha means salutation to the Shayana. So who are Shayana? Those who lie down. Shayanam, you know, Shesha Shayana, you know, you must have come across. So 
ಕ್ಷೀರ ಸಾಗರ ಶಯನ ಅಮಿತ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಕ್ಲೈಂಬ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಲೈ ಡೌನ್ ಸೊ ಆಲ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಲೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಡೌನ್ ಸೊ ಆಲ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಸೀಟೆಡ್ ವಿ ಸಿ ದ ರುದ್ರ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ದೆಮ್ ಆಲ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಲೈಯಿಂಗ್ ಡೌನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿ ದ ರುದ್ರ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ದೆಮ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ವಿತೌಟ್ ರುದ್ರ ದೇ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಲೈ ಡೌನ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ವೇ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟೇಕ್ ವಾಹ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಯು ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ ಟು ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಸೀಟೆಡ್ ದೋಸ್ ಹೂ ಲೈ ಡೌನ್ and to you okay so we are we are we are bowing down to them the people who are seated people who are lying down we are bowing down to and we are we are also reminding that the you the lord is also within them so to him to that lord within all of them we bow down uh, we will look at a few uh, excerpts from swami's discourses i uh, maybe i have excerpted quite a bit but i thought and we should understand a um, little more of what swami has it's an opportunity for us to learn so let's take a read them and uh, take a look at them. one should have a steady posture in sitting that is to say one should neither shake nor sway but even sitting like a rock motionless and with all joints locked can never be called asana that is not the sign of real asana asana means both steadiness of the physical frame and the inner joy that blooms in the heart so whatever the posture adopted by the aspirant of yoga it must be both steady and comfortable that is why patanjali advised a steady and comfortable posture i am telling you the same thing in another way what the best and most successful yielding posture is it is that posture in which one is most unaffected by the external world it is the posture that comes from practice of a moral life meritorious in the world and in accordance with the vedic path it is absolute lack of interest in matters unconnected with the highest atma when people whose ways you do not appreciate come near you there is no need to find fault with them there is no need either to laugh at them or show them your contempt it is enough to continue to do your work unaffected by their arrival let those whose behavior you do not appreciate follow their path leave them alone that is the attitude of unaffectedness after the dawn of love for the absolute the aspirant gets this feeling toward all worldly things to be more exact one should constantly be turning over in the mind the reality of brahman and the unreality of the world brahman is truth the world is unreal one must avoid comradeship with the bad and even too much friendship with the good attachment of this nature will drag one away from the path of withdrawal from the objective world to the path of external activity give up attachment to the momentary the things clothed with the trappings of name and form once you have achieved this attitude of unaffectedness you will have unshakable peace self control the purity of mind you will have the steadiness and stability of posture asana so when we say asine bih we also should recognize that that mantra refers to the people who are really seated in the right asana 
that means the divinity will be in fully present in them and it will be able to come through to such people you bow down uh, to such people because they are embodying and they're reflecting the divinity which flows through them that is the real person who is really seated and uh, that's this uh, Swami's explanation what is to sit then uh, we will look at uh, another excerpt so this uh, one which I read is is from Prashanti Vahini which Swami has written the 29th chapter if anyone would like to okay so now the next excerpt Someone comes to me to get his stomach ache cured. Then he likes this place and its atmosphere and its chanting of Om, Omkara, and devotional singing, Bhajana, and its peace, Prashanti. He sees me and observes my movements and words and actions. He takes home a picture or a songbook and before long, he forgets the ache that brought him hither and cultivates a new ache for supreme peace, prashanti, for an audience, contact and conversation, for remembrance of the name, meditation, realization. Of course, I never deviate from truth. Since I recline on truth, I am called Satya Sai. Sai as in Sesha Sai means reclining. The name is very appropriate, let me assure you. It is only those who fail to follow my instructions and who deviate from the path I have laid down that fail to get what I hold out before them. Follow my instructions and become soldiers in my army, I will lead you on to victory. When someone asks you in great earnestness where the Lord is to be found, do not try to dodge the question. Give them the answer that rises up to your tongue from your heart. Direct them. He is here in Prashantinale. So Swami is talking about Shayana means one who reclines on the truth. So all those who recline on the truth, to those we bow down. Shayane Bhyascha Vonamara. One more excerpt. No trace of fear can tarnish the purity of the heart that is shining in the splendor of truth. I am Satya Sai. Satya Sai means like the name Sesha Sai meaning he who is based on who reclines on the massive coils of the poisonous snake Shesha or the massive coils of the objective desires. Who is based on truth, who reclines on truth, which the massive coils of objective desires cannot entangle. Truth knows no defeat, truth knows no fear. It marches on heedless of acclamation and declamation. As you can see in the mantra earlier on, we looked at jungles, robbers, thieves. So that is the world. But the Lord is in control. That's why Vishnu is reclining on the Shesha, Adi Shesha, which is a serpent, thousand hooded serpent. But who can just sleep on the lap of a thousand hooded serpent which can bite and sting? Only the Lord. So because he is only he can, because he is the Lord of is the Lord who can control that snake also. So he's not affected, he's not afraid. So that is that Lord. So people who recline like that are Shaya Nebya. To that such people also we bow down. So Asi Nebya, Shaya Nebya, Shonama. We will look at the next mantra. Nama Swapadbhyo Jagradbhyascha 
ಓ ನಮಃ ನಮಃ ಸ್ವಪದ್ಭ್ಯೋ ಜಾಗ್ರದ್ಭ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಓ ನಮಃ ನಮ ಸ್ವಪದ್ಭ್ಯೋ ಜಾಗ್ರದ್ಭ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಓ ನಮಃ ಇನ್ ಟರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರೊನೌನ್ಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ದ ಉಭ್ಯೋ ಅನ್ ಅಭ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅದ ಒನ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಮೇಕ್ ಶ್ಯೂರ್ ದಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಅಬ್ಬ ಇಸ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಲೆಟರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ ವರ್ಗ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಆಸ್ಪಿರೇಟೆಡ್ ಅದರ್ವೈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ರೀಸನಬಲಿ ಸಿಂಪಲ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ನಮಃ ಇಸ್ ಸಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ ಸ್ವಪದ್ಭ್ಯ ಸ್ವಪದ್ಭ್ಯ ಇಸ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ of the plural noun of swapantaha swapantaha okay to swapantaha means those who are asleep okay those who are asleep so we worship those who sit who lie down and now we are bowing down to those who are asleep okay swapantaha it it actually swapanta has two meanings actually people are sleeping who are also dreaming also you can look at that way also uh, swapna is also comes from the swapanta only those who are asleep will dream also so it covers that also okay so swapadya namaha to all the swapanta our salutation to all those who are asleep we salute the next one is jagrat bhyah jagrat bhyah is again the fourth form of jagrantah so that means the two jagrantah means jagrat bhyah so jagrat bhyah namaha means to jagrantah namaha to those who are awake our salutation okay so people who are sleeping also we bow down people who are awake also we bow down and vaha to you we bow down so that means the lord is within each one of them the lord is the one who makes them either sleep or be awake okay salutation to those who are asleep and those who are awake and to you okay it's not that we are just saluting the people who are lying down the lord within to him we bow down so again i have a few excerpts <clears throat> every human being experiences four states of consciousness in daily life jagrata the waking state swapna dream state sushupti deep sleep and turiya the highest state of consciousness the waking state which is called jagrata is the state in which one sees and experiences the phenomenal world through the five life breaths the senses the mind the intellect and ego again this the word intellect here is actually buddhi uh, so manas buddhi and ahankara there are also five sheets for the body the five sheets are the annamaya kosha pranamaya kosha manomaya kosha vijnanamaya kosha and anandamaya kosha swami is referring to that all these together account for the experience of the phenomenal world in the waking state without the atma the waking state or experience of the phenomenal world cannot exist hence the atma is the state in this state is known as vishwa he is also called vaishwanara or virat purusha so the lord who is present in everyone who is awake jagrata is called vishwa or vaishwanara or virat purusha that's what we see around the world that's why it's called vishwa means world world which is filled with that vishwa vishnu okay, so swami is jagradbya namaha
Krishna is stated to have revealed to Arjuna his Vishwarupa, which is cosmic form. This really means that Krishna showed to Arjuna that the divine is present everywhere in all things at all times. The entire cosmos is a projection of the divine. The Atma that appears in the waking state as phenomenal cosmos in its gross form appears in the dream state in its sukshma, subtle form. The objects and forms that are experienced in the dream state have a reality only in that state. They have no existence in other states. The objects and forms that are experienced in the dream state have a reality only in that state. They have no existence in other states. All the joys and sorrows experienced in the dream state are unique, self-created experiences of the Atma. If 10 persons are sleeping in one room, their dream experiences are unique to each person and having nothing in common. This means that each person creates his own dreams, dream state and experiences his dreams. There's a light that shines in a dream state. This is known as Tejas. The Atma as the experiencer in this state is known as Taijasa, the effulgent. Apart from dreams, the presence of Taijasa can be demonstrated by a simple example. When we close our eyes, we say it is dark and we cannot see anything. Who is it that is able to experience this darkness? There is some entity that experiences darkness when the eyes are closed and described it as dark and black. That entity is described as Taijasa because it is present as the inner light during the dream state. In the third state of Sushupti, the experience of the waking and the dream states are absent. It is the state of deep sleep. All the senses are merged in the mind and nothing can be seen or imagined. In this state, prajna or integrated awareness alone exists. It is because of prajna that one is aware of this state. All the sense organs are totally inactive. Only the breathing process remains. It is because of prajna that one is aware of continuity of being in deep sleep state and the experiences of experiences a feeling of bliss. With all the senses still, the self alone is conscious in the form of prajna manifested in respiration. Hence the Vedas have declared Prajnanam Brahma. Prajna is constant integrated awareness is Brahman. Prajna is the state of unchanging, the permanent bliss described by the Upanishads. Prajna is the permanent entity that exists equally in the waking state as body, in the senses as the Antakarana, the inner motivator and in the deep sleep state as Atma. It is for this reason that it is characterized as constant integrated awareness. It is not different from Brahman or Atma. So this is the discourse Swami gave in 1987, October 1st. So as we can see in the mantra, Amaswapatyo Jagradbyascha Vonamaha. That means it is talking about these states of existence, the avasthas as they are called in the Vedic literature. Sairam sister. Sairam brother, can you please go to the second page where you said about the Vishwa 
Rupa, and there is another word, uh, Virucha Purusha, something? Yeah, Virat Purusha. Yeah. What is that? Virat Purusha, please. Virat Purusha means the Lord who is covers everything in this world. In the so he is everything exists in him. It all comes from the word Vira, Vir. Okay. You it's originate from there, kind of. See, the Vishwarupa, when the Vishwarupa. Yeah, the Vishwarupa form, is fine. Another name is Virat Purusha. Vishwarupa is the form of Vishwa. The Purusha who has taken in that form is called Virat Purusha. Okay, okay. Thank you. So sometimes it's called Vishwa Virat Purusha also is the name given. So that means the, the Lord who is the world, who the form of God in the form of the entire universe is called Virat Purusha. Okay, in the Lord in whom everything in this world exists and is one part is called Virat Purusha. Okay. So, as you can see in the mantra, that is what the uh, Rishi saw. People who, knew, who are sleeping also, they saw the Lord. People who are awake also, they saw the Lord. They saw Vishnu, they saw Taijasa, they saw, you know, Pragna. Everything they were able to witness and to that they bow down. That to that Atman, that Virat Purusha, they bow down. Okay, that's why plural is given here. You know, so everything in this world which is sleeping, the Lord is present. In everything which is awake and moving about, the Lord is present. Okay. To that, so as you can see, the mantra is actually once we understand when we walk around, we should be able to look at everything and see there's divinity in making it work. There's divinity making it work. And just bow down to that divinity. So that is the way we cultivate the experience of the Lord everywhere. Um, so, thank you. you know, thank you. Rudram basically helps with that. Oh, it tells us that's what we should do. Okay, so we'll go to the next mantra. Namas Tishthad Bhyo Dhavat Bhyascha O Namaha. Namas Tishthad Bhyo Dhavat Bhyascha. O Namaha. Namas Tishthad Bhyo Dhavad Bhyascha O Namaha. Um, I think you have to pay a little attention to some of the letters and how it's they are pronounced. Namas Tishthad Bhyo. This Ushtha. The Ush is the cerebral Asha, so the, the tongue should be raised towards your roof of the mouth. Tishtha. So the tha also comes from there only, the same position. Okay, tishthadyo. So the tha is the second tha in the tha varga. So it has to be aspirated, you know, it has to be uh, said with a certain force of air. Tishthadyo. Again, ud and here is this letter. So there are three letters, ud, b, ya, that b, it's the fourth letter in the per, uh, per varga, so it has to be also aspirated. Tishthad bhyo. Tishthad bhyo. Okay. So that's something which you can practice. The next uh, word in the dha is also fourth letter in the ta varga. So it's dha. Dhavat udbhya. Okay. Again, same thing. Udb. Yeah. So the b Dha has to be aspirated with a little bit of force, okay? Dhavat bhyascha. Dhavat bhyascha. O namaha. Okay? Um, we will look at the meaning. Namaha salutation. Tishthad bhyaha. Means it's a fourth form of the tishthantaha. Okay, tishthantaha is the simple noun. Of plural noun, okay. All those tishta tishta means to stand, tishta. So those who stand up, okay, who have risen, okay, uttishta. You know, we mean someone who's so we're waking up also. We'll tell, please wake up, I wake up and stand up. So tishta means one who has established oneself, who is standing up, and um, those all those people who are standing up we bow down to them 
so you know people who were sleeping we were standing and people who were seated we were, were bowing down people who were uh, lying down we were uh, saluting now people who are standing up we are saluting tishtantaha tishtantaha okay tishtab tishtabhya namaha means all those who stand we bow down to tishtantaha The next word is dhavadhyaya. Again, you know the sandhi comes, dhavadhyascha. The visarga becomes ish and cha. Dhavadhyaya cha becomes dhavadhyascha. Okay, dhavadhyascha. Okay. Dhavadhyaya is the fourth form of the word dhavantaha. Okay, dhavantaha means those who run. People who are standing up and those who are running. So if we see anyone running, we see, oh, the Lord is making that person run. To that also we bow down. Ava namaha. Dhavadhyaha namaha. Means to those who run, our salutation. Cha vaha. Okay, vo namaha. Vo is vaha. That's to you. To the Lord who is present in all of them. We bow down. Okay. Salutation to those who stand up or arisen, those who run, and to you. So you can see different states of people's existence. They are lying down, sleeping, sitting up, standing up, running. To every, in everyone we see Rudra. Okay. Um, I don't have any excerpts for this, but I think uh, many of you may be familiar. I think in Abhirami Andati, I think the one of the tenth verses, Nindrim Kadandam Nadandam Tirindam, you know, like that. We see the Lord. That's the way that goes. Even in some uh, Divya Prabhanta, which is written by Alvars also, uh, the same concept is Tiridandam, means one who moves about, who is sitting, standing, lying down. The Lord is actually doing all this in this world. It's the way the Alvar. A great devotee of Vishnu. So, whenever he sees anything, he sees, oh, the Lord is making all this move. The Lord is, you know, sitting down. So, the great devotees have seen the Lord in everything. And that is one way of cultivating our ability to see the Vishwarupa, Lord in this world. Everything in this world as a part of that Lord. Okay, so that's what it is. There may be the excerpt, but I couldn't find anything which I, you know, which I could put here, so I have not put. But it's basically whatever we have discussed so far is an extension of that. Okay, we we'll look at the next mantra. Nama sabhabhya sabhapati bhyascha o nama. Nama sabhabhya. Sabhapati Bhyascha Vo Namaha. Namah Sabhabhya Sabhapati Bhyascha Vo Namaha. Uh, we will look at the pronunciation part. Sabha. So this Bha is the fourth letter in the Pavarga. So it has to be aspirated with the force. Sabhabhya. Again, the Bha is also the fourth letter, same letter. So both of them have to be aspirated. Sabhabhya. Then the next one is Sabha. Again Sabha, same Sabha. Patibhyascha. Again Ubh is the fourth letter in the Pavarga. So that has to be aspirated. Sabhabhya, Sabha, Patibhyascha. Okay, we will look at the meaning. Amaha salutation. Sabhabhya. Is the fourth form of sabha. Okay, sabha. Sabha means members of assemblies so or assemblies themselves. Sabha. In Tamil, we will say sabai. Sabai will be tirkravarhal. Means they say, you know, so everyone who is seated in the assembly, who have assembled together. So to that assemble. So the Lord is the one who is present as assemblies. Okay, to those groups of people who have audience, 
were gathered. To them, our salutation. Okay. Sabhabhya Namaha. So you actually, many people, when they give uh, talks in Sanskrit, they will say Sabhabhya Namaha. You know, they will address the audience like that. Sabhabhya Namaha. That means they, not only the audience, the divinity in the audience, they bow down. So they will actually, they will, many people I've heard who are talking and giving talks in Sanskrit will chant this. Namas Sabhabhya Sabhabhya Oh Namaha. Okay. So, so the assembly and the Lord in that assembly, we bow down. Next one is Sabhapati Bhyaha. Okay, it means again the fourth form, the fourth vivakti of Sabhapataya. Sabhapataya. So Sabhapataya is a plural noun. I mean the leaders of assemblies. The sim singular one, I think many of you know, Sabhapati. Sabhapati means singular. Sabhapataya is plural. Okay. So the leaders of assembly is also we bow down because the Lord is the real leader of the assembly. So the leader, the Lord who is present in all the leaders of the assemblies, we bow down. To you. So we tell the Lord, you know, to you in all these, we bow down. Salutation to members of the assemblies and leaders of assemblies and to you. Okay. Um, so Swami, when he addresses the audience, he will say Divyatma Swarupalara or Prematma Swarupalara because he addresses when he is giving discourses, addresses the inherent divinity in each person. Divya Atma Swarupa. So that is the way Swami always saw the audience. Whenever he gave a talk, you know, it's not that I am giving a lecture, others have to listen. No, it is a conversation between one Atman to the Nada Atman. So Swami always saw the Sabhas as Divya Atmas. Okay, that is what this is. So Swami actually, you know, did every discourse. He has given two, three thousand discourses. In every discourses, he has um, given the same you know he has demonstrated to us how we should look at people when we give talk to anyone talk to a group of people that it is the lord who is present in them and that divine energy we communicate to we bow down we salute salutation to the members oh sorry i think Members of assemblies and leaders of assemblies. So. Okay, sorry. Okay, then we'll look at the next mantra, which is the last mantra in this Anuvaka. Namo Ashve. Vyoshvapati Bhyascha O Namaha Namo Ashve Vyoshvapati Bhyascha O Namaha Namo Ashve Vyoshvapati Bhyascha O Namaha uh, Let's look at the pronunciation aspect. Ishva, I think it should be simple. Ubhya, again Ub is the Fourth letter in the per varga, so it has to be aspirated with force. This S shape is called avagraha. I have discussed this before, which is a silent A. Okay. Ishva pati abhyascha. Again, ab is the fourth letter in the per varga. It has to be aspirated. Okay. Now we will look at the meaning. Namaha salutation. Ashve byaha. As you can see, the Visarga has become O there, Yo, because of Sandhi. So Ashwebhya has become Ashwebhyo. Okay. But the simple word is Ashwebhya without the Sandhi, which is the fourth form of the word Ashwaha. Okay. Ashwaha 
to Ashwaha means Ashwabya. Ashwaha means horses. Ashwaha means one horse. Ashwaha means many horses. So we are bowing down to all the horses. So in olden days, people were traveling in horses. It was the horses in which people traveling, you know, we're saying Dhavad Vyascha, you know, people running. Some people are running on the horses. Okay. So we bowed onto the horses also. So that, the now I think nowadays we have to look at the cars and we have to bow down to the cars. With cars, uh, by other, all forms of vehicles, people travel. So it's we, we are covering Ratham later on, so I will come to that later. Uh, but Ashwa means horses. Okay. Ashwabya Namaha. To all the horses, we bow down. Ashwapatibya is the next word. Again, this Avagraha is the A. Ashwapati Pyascha. Again, Visarga and Ch, ch become Ischa. So that's how you get that Sandhi. Ashwapati Pyascha. Simple, the word without the Sandhi is Ashwapati Pyah. Okay. Which is the fourth form of the word Ashwapatayaha. Okay. The simple, this is a plural noun. Simple noun is Ashwapati. Ashwapatayaha is the plural. That means the lords of the horses. So we bow down to the lords of the horses. Means who own the horse, who, who are able to control the horses. To such people also we bow down. So the people who are riding on the horse, so are called Ashoka. So people who are riding on the horse, who have the horse under control, to those lords we bow down. Ashwapataya, Ashwapati Bhyas, Namaha, Ashwapati Bhyas. Okay, and then we see Vaha, that is you, the Lord is present in all of them, to that Lord we bow down. Okay, Namo Ashwe Bhyo Shwapati Pyascha, O Namaha. Salutation to the horses, the lords of the horses, and to you. I have a few excerpts, so let's look at them. The Lord declares that He is the seed of all beings. Bijam Mam Sarva Bhutanam. Watch a tree. The roots, the tongue, the branches, the twigs, the shoots, the leaves, the flowers, the fruits all look different in form, taste, hardness, smell. They have different uses for the tree and for us. But all this manifold variety is produced, sustained, subsumed, and served by one single seed. And each fruit contains the same seed. He is the seed. He is the tree. He is the fruit. Love is the seed. Love is the tree. Love is the fruit. The tree of creation is hanging down with its roots in heaven or else it will dry for want of sustenance. It is called Ashwatta, the horse tree. For Ashwa or horse is in Indian tradition the symbol of restlessness, wavering agitatedness. The banyan tree, which is the Ashwatha tree, shivers in every leaf with the slightest whisper of wind. You must have heard of the Ashwamedha or horse sacrifice, the great rite in the past. The inner meaning of the rite is the destruction of the wayward mind, the Ashwa. So the Ashwa and Ashwapati is the one who has controlled the mind. The Lord who is the mover of the mind, who controls the mind, to that Lord we bow down. And as you can see, Swami is telling that everything in this world, the trees, the tree, leaves, flowers, all of them came from the same seed. And the same seed, the, 
the life force in the seed is only keeping the tree alive though all the parts look so different the same way in the mantra which we have read is the entire third anvaka we have looked at various forms of people being active in this world um people doing various things all sorts of things but they are all part of that same tree that ashwa tree okay that seed the lord who is the seed of that tree who is part of everything in this world is entire creation who is the seed for this entire creation to that lord who has everything under control we bow down to him so that is the uh, in a nutshell the gist and summary of the third anvaka you can go back and look at them as you can see so it shows god is present in everything as the atman sarvatmaka sarva vyapi okay who is present every sarvantaryami who is the inner motivator in everything so this entire mantra actually is recognizing and reminding us recognizing that it reminds us of that so that we can practice in our way life um this says this principle i look at the dhyana shloka and the you know this the the dhyana shloka for this which is by some commentators many commentators is a very long one it runs into about 10 close to 10 verses so i did not put it um because then it will takes a lot of time but i picked to this dhyana shloka from one commentator called uh, uh skanda okay um, there's a, a, a there's a commentator called skanda and uh, from actually it's believed that skanda or subramanya or murugan is the one who is given that meaning okay of that uh, commentary um so maybe because it's kanda shashti cover you know the time so maybe i thought i will pick it up from there okay uh, so we will look at the dhyana shloka so the meditation which the rishis recommend that you know we do when we chant this third anvaka so let me first read it then we we'll look at the meaning swatmanam kridi भावयंत मनिषम रुद्रम रिपुघ्नम सताम राजा मात्य समस्त राष्ट्र पुर हस्त्यश्वादि रोगापहम सो यू कैन सी इट्स मेनी वर्ड्स आर कंबाइन इन वन वर्ड राजा मात्य समस्त राष्ट्र पुर हस्त्य अश्वादि रोगापहम Okay, there are uh, many words. We'll look at the breakdown and the meanings. Barhotasam, barhotamsa dharam, kirata vapusham, devam yuvanam, shabhir bhutai swam rita magrato. Sorry, shabhir bhutai swam rita magrato. Munir janair kiyam. सदा चिंतये ओके आई विल आई थिंक द मीनिंग इज मच मोर नीड नेसेसरी फॉर दिस सो आई हैव यू नो गिवन द ट्रांसलेशन इन इंग्लिश बट आई हैव गिवन द संस्कृत वर्ड्स वेयर एवर मैटर्स सो वी विल जस्ट टेक अ लुक एट देम आई ऑलवेज कंटेम्प्लेट सदा मींस ऑलवेज चिंतये मींस आई थिंक Okay, the Lord of the Lord. One's own self, swatmanam, means I am always contemplating on my own real self, swatmanam, the Atma within us, within each of us. Rudram, the Rudra, who is meditated, bhavayantam, in the heart, hridi, anisham, incessantly. भावय हृदय भावयंतम अनिशम हृदय इन द हार्ट भावयंतम हु इज मेडिटेट अपॉन अनिशम मींस विदाउट ब्रेक विद कंटीन्यूअसली ऑलवेज अनिशम 
தேவம் யுவானம் ஒன் த யூத்ஃபுல் லோட் யுவானம் மீன்ஸ் யூத்ஃபுல் தேவம் த லோட் ஸோ வித் த ரிஷி சி த லோட் எஸ் ஹூ இஸ் ஏபிள் டு ரன் ஹூ இஸ் ஏபிள் டு யூனோ கிளைம் மவுண்டன்ஸ் நோ தட்ஸ் ஆல் தட் வி சோ ஹூ கேன் பி வெரி ஆக்டிவ் தேவம் யுவானம் இந்த ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் அ ஹண்டர் Sorry. he made a few mistakes so i have just fix it so sorry about this okay so okay, we will go back to i found that i had missed something so i fixed it they were in the form of a hunter kirat kirata vapusha kirata means a hunter vapusha means the form body okay so the lord is seen as a young lord who is in the form of a hunter wearing peacock feathers on his head barho tamsa barho tamsa means a uh, feather of the peacock amsa means parts of peacock apparently this shiva is wearing peacock feathers in his crown okay surrounded by dogs and other animals shobhir bhuta is chavrita magrato agrato means one who is leading uh, dogs and other animals okay contemplated upon by ascetics okay. the word is muni janai dhyayam muni janai means by muni janas people who are rishis ascetics dhyayam means one who is meditate upon okay meditate upon okay. destroyer of enemies of the good ripugnam ripu means enemy gna means one who removes destroys ripugnam satam means of good people okay you can otherwise you can uh, look at it in a slightly different way destroyer of enemies also we can say and all the good people also we can say but there are the multiple ways you can give them in ripugnam satam remover of diseases roga paham means one who removes all diseases roga means uh, disease apaham means one who removes them okay of kings ministers the whole kingdom the cities elephants horses and others raja raja matya samasta means raja matya samasta all samasta means the entire rashtra means rashtra means nation cities whatever you want to call it rashtra pura city hasti means elephant ashwa hasti ashwa means elephant horses so usually the kings you know have a nation country the country has cities in within the cities there are um i don't know, his army you know the the armies of kings had elephants horses chariots etc okay nal pada you know they will say four forms of so uh, it's basically hasti ashwadi means etc adi means etc so the lord is seen as a young lord who is wearing all this um, peacock feathers and he is leading an army you know is surrounded by animals uh, elephants horses so that means he is the one who is making this entire world run i'm reminded of um, the episode of arjuna seeing shiva you know who came in the form of a hunter when he had gone to the himalayas uh, kailash and he fought with him so the lord came as a hunter and i'm also reminded of you know adi shankaracharya once when he was walking along a uh, street in banaras he saw someone come as a low caste person or something like that with four four dogs the dogs actually symbolized 
the Vedas themselves. So, you know, there are multiple meanings in which we can see the Lord is the one who keeps this entire world active. So the rishis, that's what they contemplated. That the Lord who is leading this entire world with all the things in this world, all animals, creation, is being led by this Lord. Uh, and he, they always contemplated on that. Sada Chintai. So this is what I had prepared so far. I think I think maybe I went too fast. I don't know. It's about 10 o'clock. With this, the, the third Anuvaka comes to an end. As you can see, uh, the Rishis saw this entire world as being pervaded by Rudra. And um, they saw these mantras reveal, being revealed to them. And so this, so far we are seeing uh, many ways in which the Lord is described as being present in different things. And there are inner significances of each of them also, which we saw from Swami's discourse excerpts. I hope uh, it's useful. Um, I will stop here. And if there are any questions and if I have answers, we can discuss. Yes, Brother Kumar. Uh, Brother Aruna, uh, thanks for this. Uh, I have a simple question. Maybe I don't understand. After each Anuvaka, you have a Dhyanam, right? Yes. Now, this Dhyanam is not part of Rudram or is it something outside? I just want to understand. It's, it's outside, brother. Okay. So, so what happens is by tradition, um, whenever I think different, uh, different schools of uh, Vedic learning the rishis or the teachers explain the mantra and they may have given uh, uh, a meditation instruction to the uh, students uh, so they chant this mantra many times and then they practice meditating on a form of the lord so these are you know uh, something for them to think about contemplate and I think, so it was a part of this learning tradition. Uh, as part of learning the meaning, the people are given a Dhyana Shloka, uh, which will help them center their mind, picture, because the mind needs some form to dwell on, some concept. So I think these were uh, crafted by the teachers uh, who were teaching the uh, Veda, the, uh, the mantra, Rudram itself, Namakam, to various students. So in um, Vedic tradition, you will find for many mantras, you will have a Dhyana Shloka. For Gayatri, there will be a Dhyana Shloka. For Rudram, there is a Dhyana Shloka. So these actually help the person who is practicing. These are aids, you can say. Uh, um, Audio-visual aids for uh, contemplating on the Lord. Uh, is the way I look at it. Uh, but they are not integral part of the mantra themselves. I hope uh, that clarifies. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Saira. And also, Lord Muruga's blessings because of Kanda Sasti time. Yes, Bless yes. you. Okay. Thank okay. you. Yeah, that's why, you know, Skanda Deva. Yes. Skanda Deva Bhashyam, I was able to pick today. I think that's also, because I was looking at the other one and I thought if I take it, it may go more than one and a half hours. Then I looked at this Bhashyam and I picked it up. Uh, so it's from Shiva Rahasya, you know, it's a text in that there's one chapter which is uh, Rudra Bhashyam, where uh, Skanda, Lord Subramanya is su supposedly commenting on the Rudra. That's the way that entire Bhashyam is. So I think it is uh, God, it's his will that we read that Dhyana Shloka. Asai. Thank you. Now, if there are no, uh, we can close. I have a small announcement. Next Saturday, I may not be able to take the class because I am out of town. Um, it, I may be able to take, but I cannot predict the situation uh, because I'm going for to attend an event, actually, uh, uh, Ekada Sharudra event in Trinidad, uh, which is organized by the Global Council. Um, so, Prada Vedanarayan is also coming. So, I am planning to attend that. Uh, so, 
I think you all can chant or read or study the Rudram next week. I will continue from the following week, uh, which is the 12th, I think. Sai Ram, brother. Um, the 12th and 13th are global Ahanda Bhajan. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know whether I, uh, I will just do a poll. If anyone wants, we can have the session. I don't have an issue. I um, think we should skip this as well. Yeah, twelfth morning is fine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we let's start the Akanda Bhajan with this. With Evening. Yes. Oh, yeah. Sure. Okay. So we'll have it on the twelfth. Uh, we'll start the fourth Anuvaka. Yeah. Okay. Sairam, brother, may I make the one announcement here, please? Yes. Please. Um, Sairam, everyone, as we have mentioned now, the Sri uh, Satya Sai Baba Global Council having their global Ahanda Bhajan on November 12th and 13th. November 12th is starting from 5 p.m. and uh, it will be end by on November 13th at 6 p.m. And um, we encourage all of you to uh, participate in it. And um, uh, this is uh, on 12th and 13th. Um, and the venue is as uh, Sri Satya Sai Baba Center of Scarborough. So uh, the venue is Scarborough Sai Center. Thank you. Sairam. Sairam, sister. So please note that next Saturday there will not be a Sanskrit class, but we'll mm -hmm. continue the week after. Yeah. It's Sairam. We'll mm -hmm. close with uh, Samastha Loka and Shanti Shanti. Mm -hmm. Om. Samasta loka sukhino bhavantu. Samasta loka sukhino bhavantu. Samasta loka sukhino bhavantu. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Sairam, everyone.